11.3c. Okay, today we're going to talk about one-sided limits. One-sided limits. All right. Shh, shh. We have three things to do. Three things. So the first thing. Okay. Um, we're just going to look at some weird graphs, <coughs> and we're going to find the limits of things. But we have a new notation today that you don't know about. So this is what it looks like. You're taking the limit as x goes to c. And what they do is they put a little minus up here. C minus. You know, stuff you don't want to see on your report card. So the limit as x goes to c minus of f of x, what this is, is this is the limit from the left side of c only. From the left side of c. Okay? And I've talked a little bit about, when we were talking about limits last week, I was like, okay, coming from this side and coming from this side, they both go, go to the same spot. Well, not necessarily all the time are they going to do that. So now we're going to do the limit as x goes to c plus. Yo, Chan, you know all about c pluses, right? Oh, dang, throwing some shade. <laughs> First one, I went true. Oh, b plus, that's right, b plus. All right, limit as x goes to c plus of fx. This is the limit from the right side. That's all I'm recording. Yo, Chan, you can listen to that later, okay? Uh, limit from the right side of c. All the seniors are going to be watching this, don't you think? Mm -hmm. I doubt it. We Matthew, yeah, hey, Matthew, what up? Shout out. Go, Pack, go. I was watching. Okay, now, oh, good. I'll have to shout out to you. Now, take the limit as x goes to c of f of x, and we know that a limit can or cannot exist. So here's the thing. The limit as x goes to c equals l if and only if. You know if and only if statements? Yeah. Yes, they go both ways. Exactly. Some things don't. So the limit f of x equals l if and only if these limits up here, the limit as x goes to c plus of f of x has to equal L, and so does the limit as x goes to c minus has to equal L. So in other words, these can't be different. These have to be the same in order for the limit to exist at exactly c. And we talked about that. We already kind of know about that. Okay, so we're going to do an example here. And we're going to draw this funky looking graph, okay? And then we're going to talk all about it. So here we go, number one. So draw this weird graph. You're going to see some of this stuff in your um, homework tonight, and I'll give you a weird one on your test too next week. So we'll go to um, one, two, three, four, five, and we'll go to four up, two, three, four, and then we'll just go to two over here, okay? So that's negative 2, that's positive 5, <clears throat> and then this is 4. All right, so draw this graph. Are you ready? You got your tick marks down. Um, first, let's put a dot right here, just a dot, okay? And then let's put an open circle up here, and then we'll draw a, like a, almost like a parabola-looking thing down to here with an open circle. We shall put a dot right here. And then let's say that this one goes to three. And let's go like, put an open circle at three, three. And then we'll draw a straight connecting line there. And then we will at three, one, we'll draw a dot to there. All right, see what I mean by a funky looking graph? It's weird, right? If you wanted to come up with like what this is, this is just y equals f of x. It would be some weird piecewise graph. It would be pieces of graphs. Like this looks kind of like a parabola right here. There's a line, there's some dots, there's a straight horizontal line. We're going to go ahead and we're going to find the limits of all this stuff, okay? All right, so here we go. Here's the first one. We're going to find the limit um, of f of x. So this is considered f of x over here, the whole graph. We're going to find the limit as x goes to 3 from the left, so 3 minus. 
Okay. Um, we're also going to find the limit as x goes to 3 plus, and we'll talk about the limit as x goes to 3. So these are all three separate questions, but they're just to get you, you know, used to how these all work. Okay. So here you go. You're going to go to x equals 3. Okay. So that's right here. Here's 3. Okay. Uh, we can do this one in blue. And we're going to talk about the limit. So what is the y value approaching on the left side of 3? So here's 3, right? And here's the left side of 3, and here's the right side of 3. So this is the 3 minus over here. This is 3 plus over here. So as I'm walking on my graph, do 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 do, do on the left side, what y value am I getting closer and closer to? 3. Perfect. Right here, 3. That's a gross 3. That's 3. There we go. Okay, now, no. So here I am on my graph. Am I getting closer and closer to 1? No. Oh, so you're still going towards 3. Yes, I'm going towards 3 from the left-hand side. So now I'm going to go towards 3 from the right-hand side, and I'm getting closer and closer to what y value? 1. Mm -hmm. And then the limit, these have to be equal in order to have a limit here at 3. So what's the limit? Does not exist. Okay? There's a big gap there. Oh, They're not approaching like, the same number. If it were like a sine graph and you were looking for it, like at 2 pi or whatever? Yeah, sine would, would be fine. Like, it would just. Yeah, because sine's continuous. Okay. The problem is this has a discontinuity right here. Okay. And so you're going to one value, like, like someone's going to McDonald's and someone's going to Arby's, and you're not meeting up. You're not going to have lunch together. It's really sad. But this person's going to have its own lunch. They're going to Arby's. They're going to McDonald's. But you're not going to go together. Ooh, that's good. Mm, I'm hungry. OK, here we go. Yeah? So now, let's do this one. Let's do the limit as x goes to 0 from the left of f of x. And let's do the limit as x goes to 0 plus. And then we'll do the limit as x goes to 0. <coughs> OK? All right. So I'll let you catch up. I wrote that down pretty quickly. So the limit as x goes to 0 minus, the limit as x goes to 0 plus, and the limit as x goes to 0. So now we're ignoring when x goes to 3. We already answered those questions. So now we're going to look at where x equals 0. So here's where x equals 0 right here. OK? And we're going to go from the left first. We're on our graph, and we're going towards 0 from the left. And what is our y value approaching? It's approaching 1. Perfect. How about from the right? 1 also. They're approaching 1. So what's the limit? One. Yeah, they're both going to Chick-fil-A. Delicious. Okay. Now, the question, though, is what is f of 0? No. It's 3. It's 3. F of 0 is this dot right there. F of 0 equals 3. So these don't have to be equal to each other, remember? Yeah. These all have to. In order to get, you know, a limit here and here to make that limit work down here, these two have to be equal. But you don't have to have a value there, or your value could be different. doesn't matter. All right. Um, what is, here's another question, what is F of negative 2 equal to? It is. F of negative 2 equals 0. Okay? Now, F of negative 2, if I were to take the limit on the right side of negative 2, my limit, though, would be what? 4. four. There's no left-hand limit because the graph doesn't exist on this side. So the limit is 4 on the right-hand side. There is no left-hand limit, but the value is 0 there. Yeah? Sorry. That's okay. Same. We'll have to probably end up graphing it and finding No, I'll give you that graph. And then, well, there's, there's more coming up that you will have to graph, though. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. That was part A. Let's do part B now. So, yeah, here comes the ones that you're going to have to graph yourself. So that one was I gave you a graph, and you had to look at it and answer some, a bunch of questions. Now we're going to have piecewise graphs that you have to graph yourself and find the limit. But there's a little trick to this. I don't actually ask you to graph them. I just really ask you to find the limit. 
And um, there's a good trick on this. It's pretty cool. OK, so here we go. Uh, number two. Let's say that we're given f of x equals this piecewise graph. Negative x squared plus 4x minus 1 when x is less than or equal to 2 and 2x minus 3 when x is greater than 2. Have we done piecewise graphs before? Like, no? Maybe a long time ago. Piecewise graphs are just, they're in pieces. Half the graph is something and the other half is something else. Doesn't have to be half, but there's only two here, so. We did? Okay. And then we're going to find the limit as x goes to 2 from the right, we're going to do the whole thing. The limit as x goes to 2 from the left, OK? Um, we're also going to find the limit as x goes to 2. And we also are going to evaluate what f of 2 is. All right, so write those down. We'll talk about these. Now, you do not, I'm not going to make you graph this. Does it say to graph it? Does it say to show the graph? Because I don't, I don't care. Um, it says, does the limit exist if it, give its value. If it does not exist, give an explanation. OK, that's pretty easy. So we don't have to graph these. All right, so this is what you're going to do. From the right-hand side is going to be this one right here, when x is greater than 2. OK, so we're looking at this graph. Who knows what it looks like? So here's 2, and it's a line on this side of 2, and it's a parabola on the left side of 2. So if you want to find the limit as x approaches 2 on this side, you would just plug 2 into this one. Even though x is not equal to there, we want to find the open circle that it would be. So what would x equal if we plug 2 in? Mm, positive 1. We would go 2 times 2 minus 3 equals positive 1. So really, if I were to graph this, there would be an open circle here, and then I'd have a line. It's just rise to run one. That's what it would look like. All right, so on the left-hand side now, that's when x is less than or equal to 2. So there's actually going to be a value there. So let's go ahead and evaluate what that is. So we'll plug in 2. So negative 2 squared plus 8 minus 1. What does that give us? Um, three? three? Three. That gives us three. So over here at two, I would go to one, two, three, and I would put a solid line, and it's going to be some kind of a parabola. Looks like that. We don't even really care what the graph looks like. And so let's talk about what the limit is. So you plug it into the left side. We plugged it into, or, or the right side, sorry, the right side was first. We plugged it into the right side. Then we plugged it into the left side. We got one and three, so what's the limit? Does not exist. There's a break there, there's a gap. They're not coming together. They're you know, going to different places. And then what is f of two? f of two is whichever one it equals to. It's not both, because it's a function, you can't have two values. But, and it was an open circle at two, what's the value? Three, that's the value there. only can plug into this one because that's where x equals 2. See, for this part of the piecewise of your graph, x equals less than or equal to 2. Here, x is just greater than 2, so it doesn't have a value on that graph there. All right, let's try another one. Number three. Whew, this one's a little tricky. You ready? f of x equals piecewise, x squared minus 9 over x minus 3. And this is when x does not equal 3. OK? And then 2, when x equals 3. All right. Now, you can choose to graph these if you want to. You can actually graph piecewise graphs in your calculator. Um, I don't know if I have time to go over that. I might later. Um, so what you're going to do here, though, is we're going to take the limit, of course, as x is going to 3 from the right. We're going to take the limit as x goes to 3 from the left, because 3 is like every, everything weird's happening there, you know? So we want to see what's going on there. 
And then we're gonna take the limit as x goes to three. And of course, we wanna find out what f of three equals. Two, you know that already, cool. Okay, so let's go ahead and this one, it's a little different than the last one, okay? This one is, this is the graph at all times except at three, it's gonna be a dot. So let's go ahead and let's use our algebra, which you guys are really good at, and let's break this down, okay? Because right now, if I were to plug three in and find the limit, I would get zero over zero. So let's go ahead and factor this. This is x plus three, x minus three, x minus three on the bottom, and then we will reduce. Okay, so it's a line. What this is, this graph is simply the line x plus 3. y equals x plus 3. So you go to 3, and you travel up 1 over 1. But when you get to x equals 3, 1, 2, 3, there's an open circle there. And then at x equals 3, the value is 2. So that's what the graph looks like. It's a line with a hole in it but then they filled that hole in a different spot. Why would they do that? To mess with you. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know, right? They want you to know what, it, they want you to know what a limit is. So here we go. The limit from the right-hand side of, of three is equal to what? What's this y value here? Does anyone know? Five. No, you're close. Six. It's six. Did you plug it in right here? Yeah. Your I know, that's why I, I, I did a question mark. So there could be like, there you go. Figure not drawn to scale. Like SAT, they love to do that. They love to try and trick you. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's a right angle. Not drawn to scale. Oh, it's like 91 degrees. Okay. Anyways, x plus 3, right? We went up here and we fixed it. This is what your whole quiz was on Friday. You fixed it. You plug 3 in, and guess what you get? 6. Guess what you get from the left-hand side? 6. What's the limit? 6. six. Ooh, 6, 6, 6. Oh. You know what I'm saying? All right. My driver's license has that Really? Ooh, creepy. All right, so now, what is f of 3, though? f of 3 is 2. two. Are you getting this? If you get this, then you get limits. Like, you understand it. Okay, let's do one more piecewise. Okay, next year you'll find out why. This year we'll just do. No, you don't even know what we're talking about? No, I don't Oh, all right, here we go. We're going to find the limit as x goes to 1. For f of x, <laughs> you gotta move. And f of x equals 2 minus x when x is less than 1, x when x is greater than or equal to 1. All right, so here we go. It's just one question. I'm not doing all three or four or whatever. This is a piecewise graph. We've got x is less than 1, so this is the left hand side. This is the right hand side, and they wanna know what the limit is at 1. So this is what you want to do. I'll let you catch up. Sorry, I wrote that kind of fast. What you want to do is you want to take that one and you want to plug it in for both pieces. Even though, you know, even though you're not allowed to in the first one, you're still going to do it. You're going to get an open circle there, okay? So what is, if I plug in one into the first, into the left-hand side, what is the, the answer there? One. When I plug it into here, what do I get? One. Ah, they're the same. So if they're the same, it equals 1. Because what's happening is you're getting a line. You're getting a line. And then at 1, there's an open circle. But then you're getting another line, which fills that circle in, and it goes like that. So what happens is the limit exists there. It's, it, you know, it's got this weird corner, which you'll learn about. It's not, you know, not, there's no derivative. Well, no, I'm not going to even. Okay. Last part. I don't want to ruin it for you. Spoiler alert. Uh, we're going to talk about one more thing. And it's called f of x equals intx. Have you ever heard of that before? Yeah? This is the greatest integer function. The greatest. Showman? No. What's that movie? Yeah, keep going. Is it good? I seen it. Me neither. Oh, let's rent it this weekend. Come on over, gal. Okay, never mind. All right, uh, greatest integer function. What this does is um, if you plug in a number, 
It wants you to find the biggest integer. You know what integers are? They're like whole numbers, numbers and negatives too, not fractions. The biggest integer that's just less than your number. So like 1 half, what's the greatest integer of 1 half? It would be 0. It's the biggest like whole number that's s s uh, smaller than your number. OK, or equal to. So you can graph these on your calculator. So go ahead and get your calculator out. All right, so go to your graph. Go to y equals. And if you go to math and over to num, it's number 5. See it? INT. Math, num. That's right, Cena. Yeah, INT of x. Zoom 6. And what it is, it's like a, they call it the step function. A bunch of little steps. OK? Yeah? Not a fan. So let's go ahead and just talk about the graph. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You can hit trace if you want to. Okay. If you hit trace at zero, what happens is, yeah, you get this, and then you can open circle right here at one. Because the greatest integer function says <laughs> that you're looking for the biggest integer less than or equal to your number. So at 1, you're actually equal to 1. And then you go like this. And then at 2, you're equal to 2 now. And it's a step function. It looks like that. OK, so let's talk about, they're going to ask you for limits on this thing, right? So then this would be open here. OK. All right, so let's find, we're almost done, this is the last thing. Let's find the limit as x goes to 3 from the left of the greatest integer function of x. OK? So go to 3, uh, 1, 2, 3. Mm -hmm. And if you go and you jump on your graph, there's a discontinuity there. There's a jump, pretty, pretty good sized gap at 3 on the left-hand side. The answer is 2. Mm -hmm. And then on the right-hand side, 3. Very good. On the right-hand side, it's 3. OK, we're going towards 3. We're going towards 2 there. And then um, at 3, the limit does not exist. Wait, what? Yeah. So here's 3. And I like, sometimes I like to draw like a, this imaginary line through here. So this is the left side, and this is the right side. Mm -hmm. So if I just look at the left side of the graph, I'm ignoring the right, and I'm walking towards 3, what's my y value getting closer and closer oh, to? 2. Mm -hmm. cool. Yep. Um, if I'm going from this side, though, my y value is getting closer and closer to 3. So it doesn't have any limits at any of the integers. Now, if I asked you what's the limit as x goes to 1.5, where's 1.5? 1.5 is right here. Guess what the limit is? It's 1. Because you're going from this side, you're going from this side, they both equal 1. So it's 1. OK? Mm. But at all the integers, this one does not have any limits. Let me do these back to you. Yes. OK. Done.